There is one scripture that I've comforted myself over five decades with, and it says that the divine creator being will not give you more than you can bear. So let's, let's line up with that idea. When you're feeling like I can't take any more, I can't stay in this house any longer, I need to get out, I feel like I'm in prison, realize that you're going to make it through there because you have the power to do it. And if you use your power, now power is a kind of a, a general idea, like when we talk about one power, God one power, and yet we talk about the 12 different powers, we're actually talking about the one power and 12 different uh, f faculties or manifestations, which by the way, next, next uh, Sunday will be our power Sunday, in which we go to the fifth uh, power, which is the power of power, the power of the word. And uh, we want to learn how to use our power. So at this time that you've been kind of sequestered into your cocoon, I call it, because uh, I feel like we're all at that stage of metamorphosis in which we were the caterpillar kind of doing our thing, being a caterpillar and did what caterpillars do, and they just kind of inch along the leaves and nibble along. You know, that's just kind of their day, was just nibbling on the leaves and being a little caterpillar until it was stopped in its tracks. Something happened. You know, when you look at what has happened to us, it was very quick. And maybe it was in the subtle aspects of coming to fruition, but it, when it did start manifesting, it was very quick. And it wasn't just a national, but it was a global uh, experience that took us all by surprise. So when that little caterpillar was stopped in its tracks, it may have gone, uh-oh, I don't know what's going on, but things are going to change. I don't exactly know what it is, but something inside me, some innate code went off, and that code began to rearrange itself. The whole DNA of the caterpillar began to rearrange itself as it began to match the new energy that was coming into it of what it was going to become, which is, of course, is the butterfly. But it hadn't seen itself as the butterfly, didn't know what it meant to be a butterfly, but it knew that something was coming in that was going to change the DNA of being a caterpillar into something new and different. Feel that right now and just breathe that into yourself. I don't know exactly what the new norm is going to look like. I don't know what it's going to be like when we uh, go to the next level of our conscious bioevolution uh, to what it means to be human. But I know we've been stopped in the tracks. Now, the caterpillar could have immediately gone over to being the butterfly, but you can't edit out the process of that happening. And that was the cocoon experience. Being sheltered in that cocoon must have been a frightening thing that took that caterpillar a long time to even adjust to the confinements that it had never known. Don't you feel that way a little bit? This is a new thing that we've never experienced, having to stay in our homes and not be able to have the freedom and the things that we've taken for granted. But this is an important part of the process. It can't be edited out. I've been telling that for 30 five years or more that you got to go through the wilderness to get from Egypt to, to Canaan. That's a Bible thing. When the children of Israel came out, they wanted to go right into the land of the milk and honey, the land that flows, their destiny. But they never would heard about what was lying between that, and that was the wilderness or the process. And the reason that they had to go through that is because they were men of war. They came out angry. Maybe they were angry because they'd been slaves for 430 years. Who wouldn't be? Maybe they was angry because of the fact that they had to serve the Pharaoh, had to be in a strange land that was not their land. They had every reason to feel that way, just as you have every reason to feel the way you do at this time. And to find yourself being thrown out into a desert, into the wilderness... They started complaining and saying, oh, did you bring us out here to die, Moses? There's no food. There's nothing. But I love where it says, and God said to Moses, because Moses got into the complaining with the people. He forgot his purpose, his mission. Please don't forget your 
your purpose or your mission for why you've come into this incarnation for this time. Don't forget that. Moses did. Moses began to wonder, okay, what's going on here? And then God had to remind him of something he had forgotten. And he said, Moses, remember that rod that is in your hand? I've given you the rod of power. And it was that rod in the story that he held up and parted the Red Sea. So you may be like them with Pharaoh coming behind you, the mountain on each side, and the Red Sea before you. Where do we do from here? Well, remember that God has given you what's called Aaron's rod in the Bible. And it was Aaron's rod that went behind the veil into the Shekinah glory of God's presence. And it said the old rod bloss blossomed with roses and with blossoms. Today, remember your rod of power to endure and to come through this. When they did, they came out of it as a new people. A new people now was able to go and match the vibration of the land that they were going into. You're being tuned to something very powerful that is getting ready to happen. This is not our destiny. This is our process to a higher destiny today. So, I'm going to talk as much as I can, and I feel this is a maybe challenging uh, information for some of you. I do not know, but I've waited for a long time, the right time, to begin to introduce this teaching. And this week in my meditation and prayer time, it uh, seemed like Spirit said to me the time was now to begin to talk about something that can take us through this easily. There's a place in the Bible that says that Jesus said to God, do not take them out of the world, but make them overcomers of the world. So I can't tell you there's a way out until there's a way through. So instead of looking at the way out, how do I get through this without being harmed? How do I get through this without death touching me? Illness and sickness touching me. And that's what I want to offer you some wonderful information about the place that we all are so proud to go to so often, and that is within ourselves. I'm appreciative to the in within message, I call it, that really took a hold uh, more intensified around the 80s. As, and I've told this about how I used to be flying every weekend at that time, and I'd see Shirley MacLaine's book, out on a limb, and her teachings about meditation and going in, and how that through her use of her power and presence begin to plant the seed into good consciousness, good ground of millions of people who begin to be attracted toward meditation classes. Transcendental meditation. Tim and I were in the early 90s. We went and took these classes because we wanted to meditate. It seemed like the last frontier that was left was within. Seemed like we come to the end of what we could do out here. So we had to finally come to the inner territory of the authentic true self, the divine being that we are, to the God within ourselves. Everybody wants to go to the God out there. How's that working for you? I would suggest you go to the God in you and the God that is the higher part of you. You see the whole principle behind this idea of the Father and Jesus, the Son and all of that was not a separation, but it was a stepping down of the frequency of all that God was into becoming so it could be accessible to the human experience. This is how God made it into the human dream or nightmare in many cases. Or the world as we know it today to become accessible to all of us. And through that we have gone within. I'm going to challenge us to say today that it's no longer going within. Now let's go back to the idea for just a moment that you are sequestered into your homes and your spaces and this limitation that you're feeling almost like you've been imprisoned by this so-called virus that they're telling us is actually dead until it gets a hold of some of our RNA and DNA and kind of rearranges it into a code that can replicate itself quite quickly. Wouldn't it make sense that the best thing you could do 
is to get in there and rearrange that code and bring it back to God code, to spirit code, to light code. So today, I think our answer is to realize that it is the divine caught in the human experience that is the true prisoner. You've gone within to something that has been imprisoned in your humanity, into your body level. And that's why we go within and we remind ourselves and we get a little experience of a little peace and a little joy, a little happiness here and there, but it's, it doesn't sustain itself. It's not the normal. It's not normal for people to be happy. You have to work with that. You have to connect to a frequency of, of the spirit of happiness and joy and peace. Those are all frequencies, spectrums of frequencies that are in you that when you let your consciousness come to that frequency, then there's a match and all of a sudden... It's an explosion of that in you for a time. Because remember, third dimension is about time and space. Time and space is a limited thing. So therefore, we have limited the infinite, the divine, the eternal, that without a beginning and an end into time space in which humanity has made for themselves. As time is relative, it is our own timing. And that's where I see a lot of our differences in where people are in their conscious uh, experience of evolution is because of how we use time. Some have used it more to grow, to read, to mature, while others were, haven't even thought about it. So that puts us in different levels of time, space, from each other, which the ego jumps on that because it's looking for anything to prove separation. So we got, you know, this religion over here believes that, and this religion believes that. We've got all these religions in the world and all these different schools of thought that are different from each other. And it's not that we're different from each other. It's just that our consciousness, using free will, is different from each other. But if we all end up in Christ consciousness, we will become universal, co-creative, divine human beings. Keep that pattern in your mind at all times of what is going on. So quickly, what I'm wanting to get to is within you is a spiritual body, a spiritual body that happens to be a light body. And I want to talk about this light body a little bit today. This is a big subject. I've been studying for a long time. And if it goes well today and you find an interest in it, I'm going to offer a six-week class on the Merkaba or the light body. So today is kind of an introduction uh, to that. I want to start out with the Hopi Native American saying that when the heart of man and the mind of man becomes so distant that there is no longer one between them, the earth heals herself through catastrophic events of change. Hmm. And this is amazing. This is the most positive thing that I've seen of this is to watch the pictures of all these major cities that there's always pollution and there's uh, smog all over these cities. Los Angeles, it's always smoggy in Los Angeles. It's clear as it can be today. Singapore, other huge cities are clear for the first time. I even heard recently that the wobble, the, the frequency of the, uh, the way the, the earth rotates, has changed and come back to a more original frequency of, of a new axis, a new shift. So these are some of the things to look at that are positive. And the earth have said, I had to stop you, caterpillar, or you're going to kill yourself as a caterpillar. And you're going to kill all the other caterpillars and take them with you. But we don't want to be that stuck caterpillar, imprisoned in a caterpillar body, with a butterfly DNA. There's where your dichotomy lies. This is where you're not happy. You learn, learn, learn. It's wonderful, but it doesn't bring you that atonement. It doesn't bring you that oneness that you're looking for. It is not bringing that unification feeling that you're looking for. You can learn, learn, learn. Because that feeling of being less is not being less, but being another being another kind of a human. <clears throat> For me, Jesus is the sample and example 
of that. Taken on a spiritual metaphysical level, it's not about him, the body that lived just 2,000 years ago, but it was a pattern of divine being that rearranged and made biology and physiology completely a different kind of a being. You know, it says that they went around looking at Jesus, trying to figure him out because he was really strange to the day. He was a new norm, living in an old norm. And they kept looking at him and they said, what manner of a man is this? Who is this? He looks like us. I know Mary and I know Joseph. I know he was of the tribe of Judah. They knew all of the things that was like them, but there was something they couldn't get their hands on about him that was different. He walked through the earth differently. He saw differently. He talked differently. He was coming from a whole different norm right in the old norm. And some of you have been doing that whether you know it or not until your families are kind of worried about you. And your friends are kind of worried about you. You're really strange. It's because you are more and more have becoming the new norm individually before the collective new norm showed up. You were the sample. Just as Jesus was 2,000 years ago, you are the collective Christ, natural Christ in the earth that is showing a new norm before that norm has happened. Some of the things that you're going to do and you're doing to make it through this is things you probably looked at other people and says, that's really weird. People who didn't totally plug themselves into the world systems, for instance, who felt to maybe raise their own food and to be less on the grid or to do things that we take for granted every day. There are those that stepped out and began to, to be that new norm patterned. And now it's here. And some of the things that you thought they were strange about doing, you're going to end up doing yourself. Because this is a tremendous shift that is going on. Ancient texts tell us that the time of apparent non-activity is actually a time of tremendous realignment. Wow, don't be sitting around your house all day bored. You've got work to do. You've got so much work to do that you, that, that you haven't done, that you could have done, I could have done, we could have done, that we didn't do because the old norm was so strongly patterned into us that we kept feeling, all right, I'll go Sunday and hear them talk about it, but I don't have to deal with it today. Well, that's not the case any longer. It is a time in which we have been given tremendous time on our hands. Now, watching a little Netflix, watching a movie or two, not against that, do it myself. But I'm spending more time reading, studying, and really having a time to do self-reassessment about my ministry, about my position here at Heartlight, about Heartlight itself, about our world that we knew before early March. When we were just doing the same things, same way, we've been stopped in our tracks. Please use this time. If you don't know what you do about your job, if you're one of those people that have been laid off and there's no hope for you, then create a new position. I've always been for the, the entrepreneur. And when we can, we can get together in communities and we can help each other to make our passions, our purposes for incarnating our new businesses. Think about it. I know people who have gone to jobs that they just hate going to. They don't want to get up in the morning and go to it, but they got to do it because they got to keep a roof over their head and food. On. There's millions of people like that. And then they had a passion maybe to work with with people. So they went and learned Reiki or they went and learned tuning forks or they learned some healing modality and did it on the side after spending 40, 50 hours making some CEO of a big corporation richer while they were underpaid. That day can be over for you. That's why it took you out of the job that you had. It's telling you that you're not living your potential. You're not being paid fairly for the reason you're here. 
You don't want that gap because it's a gap of being very depressed and very unhappy. So look at your compassions. You that have said, I've always wanted to do this. I wish I could do that. Well, you can. I'm getting ready to take a new class in hypnosis online beginning this month because I've always wanted to learn it. But I've, I've been saying that for 10 years. Didn't do it. But I got the time to do it now. And I'm going to do it. Please look at those things that are there. So, within these subtle fields that we're living in, the blueprints of earth realign themselves to accommodate the new patterns of energy slash information within which it is being asked to exist. In biblical terms, this time in history is equivalent to the process model to us as the death, burial, and resurrection of the universal Christ. How much stuff is dying or is dead for you that you know you will never go back to? That's not a bad thing. If your job is done and you're not going to have another job, then that space for new information and new patterns to emerge in new ways to guide you and lead you into a higher, more prosperous and I'm not just speaking of just money, although that's an important part. We don't want to be financially prosperous. The Bible says you'll only financially prosper when the soul prospers. So this is the prospering of the soul. And the soul will bring the rest to you. Finance, health, good relationships, all the wonderful things that you get because of the evolving and the awakening of the soul. So let's talk about this light body called the Merkaba, Merkaba. It's pronounced different ways by different groups. If you go Greek or Hebrew uh, or if you go Egyptian, you will find this term. I'd like to take these words to you and show you that they are in three symbols of the word. Mer, M-E-R, which means light. Ka, K-A, which means spirit. And Ba, which means body. Merkaba means the spirit body surrounded by a counter-rotating field of light, wheels within wheels. Wheels within wheels. So let's talk about this for just a moment. Where does this idea of the Merkaba originate? It's actually... A Hebrew word meaning chariot in Ezekiel, the first chapter. It gives rise to considerable body of Kabbalistic mystical literature and centuries, possibly as early as 500 BCE, 2,500 years ago, although it was older than that. But the term entered into the consciousness over 2,500 years ago. It's a word translated chariot 44 times in the Bible. 44 times the word chariot means the light body. See, this is why I didn't throw the Bible. I'm so glad I didn't throw my Bible away. I'm going to be honest with you. I know some of you did because you related it to your, your fundamentalist Christian conservative family and background and you thought the way to go forward was to, to get rid of the past. No, bring the past with you and raise the frequency of it. It's either going to use you or you're going to use it. If you don't take care of your past, it's going to always give you issues. Huh? You're going to be running from one place to another trying to get rid of unresolved old past emotional issues because you're running from it rather than bringing it into the light of the consciousness you've now attained. Use this consciousness you've been brought to. I'm just glad I didn't because I have stayed with it and said there's got to be something here why this text is so popular and why it survived all of this time and all these people that are in there. It's overwhelming when I look at it from the literalism of sim symbolic. But I didn't. I wanted to go deeper into what it all meant. The light codes are symbols representing the geometric structures of light. 
Now you have to understand that everything in the world of matter that you can see began as a blueprint. If I look at this building, or I look at your body, or I look at your car out there, that didn't just start out as a car, as a body, or as a building. It came from a blueprint. Somebody measured, they used numbers, they related the numbers together, and they used mathematics, and those who are tremendously uh, well-educated in architecture will use geometry for the angles, triangle, all these angles are all used to set the pattern for how energy is going to organize itself into matter. That's why we say that we were created first as divine idea in the mind of our creator. God had an idea. And that idea was to create itself and bring itself into every spectrum of the lower reaches of vibration until it became what we are today, human beings. The thing about that, the, the payoff on that is that as it began to lower its frequency and go down from its original frequency of who it was to become using the frequency that each time it did, it lost a little memory of itself. Every time it slowed down, finally got to the cathetic. Uh, the cathetic became something in the causal. The causal became the astral. The astral became the emotional, the mental, and the etheric, and the physical. All of those are dimensions of the same energy, just as light is the same light of the spectrum of color. But each time, it lost something in the translation until finally it becomes our physiology, which is spirit asleep. Spirit trapped in a time and space density that it forgot who it was. And that's why the divine creator put something in us, in this process, that would travel with us through each dimension of who we were to become. We call it the Holy Spirit. You can call it whatever you want, but it's a part of the divine that didn't lose in the, in the, uh, in the process of lowering itself in vibration, and it's there as that which is here to help us remember. <sighs> For I shall give you the Holy Spirit, and it shall lead you, guide you, and bring all things to remembrance. In the church I used to go to, there was a communion table in the front that says, in remembrance of me. Some of you remember that. I went to those churches. Remembrance of me. Now think about that. Re is again, member. Reassemble yourself. Reorganize yourself. You're not just remembering me of 2,000 years ago, but remember who you are. Remember that the code of all that I am is in you and remember to activate it at the most dense time of your human experience when you've most forgotten who you are. That's now. This is a time of activating a deep innate code that is in us. Choose to call it what you, what you will. It does not matter. The Merkabah, let's look at how does the idea of the Merkabah originate. It is our light body with two patterns coming together. The first pattern is the tetrahedron. Now don't shut down, it's a big word, maybe you don't know it. But there's all kinds of these geometric uh, shapes that is sacred geometry, it's called. The tetrahedron is like, think of a pyramid, a triangle pyramid. That is a tetrahedron. But the thing that is interesting about what it has done, it is, has doubled itself to become a double star. Hedrion. So you got two of them. You got one going up and one coming down. So you can say that the one going up is the male, coming down is the female, or vice versa, however you want to, want to see it. And it makes this six-sided star. Now actually there's 64-some uh, 
uh, sides if you put it into full dimension. But as you're seeing it there, it is a six-sided uh, star that is uh, there. So the light codes are symbols representing geometric structures of light. It is the awakened dormant aspect of your DNA. That's important. It's not long ago that we found out we're using such a small amount of our DNA. 3%. Maybe for some it's more than that today because of DNA activation, which I've been teaching for over 30 some years. And there's others out there that has been teaching DNA activation for the last 30 years or more. So yes, some individuals have more activation of their unused DNA, but overall, Humanity has used about 3%. 97% was seen as junk DNA. It's called junk DNA because they didn't think it was worth anything. It was left over from evolution of humanity and therefore was not seen anything. And boy, has that paradigm shifted. Now seeing it as junk, we see it as the possibility of information that will tell us how to cure all diseases and sickness and, and whatever. And the pharmaceutical people want to own it. Of course they do because they want to make it into a pill or a medicine that you take. But I'm here to tell you you don't have to do it. you got an inner pharmaceutical or organization in you that is ready to be awakened in you to work out how to repattern some of the energy to activate your old DNA that you're not using. It has awakened the dormant aspects of your DNA, helping to align you with the frequencies of energy streaming into our planet. Been saying that for so long. Breakthrough, breakthrough, breakthrough causes breakdown. But if you're not going to match what's breaking through, you're going to have a more difficult time. You know? I love watching in nature how nature has positioned itself most of the time. Such as when we have big winds and storms. I just, I'm just always taken by watching the limbs of trees. And how they blow with the wind as much as they can. There's times when it's so much that if they're older or whatever, they, they break down a little bit. But mostly it'll do its best to go with the storm and go with the wind. If they become stiff and I'm not going to change and I'm going to become what I was 20 years ago or 100 years ago, they're going to break them off just like that. It's in the vulnerability to... to a, apply ourselves to be open and to be free to receive. Even the Bible says that I shall be as the wind that listens through the trees and goeth wherever so it goes. Are you willing to go where spirit is leading you today? Are you going to stay stiff? Are you going to find the flow of your life, the river of life that is flowing to move you into the next level? What is the light body? It's a grid work of light, sacred geometry that brings together your physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual body. And I've been saying this for a long time that the old paradigm of even body, mind, and spirit is going to change eventually into the new norm that everything is energy. We don't need how it's been divided up by frequency to become more dense the body, less dense the soul, uh, less dense the spirit. It's all going to emerge together by a new pattern in which we're going to be whole beings. Whole beings. The body radiates light energy and electromagnetic links your multidimensional self with infinite universe. Now you that have been through my quantum jumping classes and finding the self on multiple dimensions or universes, multiverses, so to speak, know that this is a, even a greater step toward understanding how that we can have access to these different dimensions of our self. And I've done my best to try to get people out of the belief of lack. I don't have this, I need to get that. You have everything. You are complete. Creation was a very successful thing. It worked. And Jesus, as reported, said, it's finished, folks. There's nothing you can add nor take away from what God has created. It is whole and perfect as it is and always will be. But we have forgotten that. 
as we have allowed our consciousness to go into the lower frequencies. We believe that we lost something. We need to get it. Where's the first place that most Christians bring you in? You're lost. I once was lost, but now I'm found. No, you lost your memory, but you didn't lose who you were. Can't add nor take away from it. Yes, we've lost our memory. Holy Spirit, in this hour and day, help us to remember who we are in this time in which we see so much breaking down going around in our world and even in our personal lives. And so it is. So, new patterns are happening is what I'm saying. A new pattern is happening. And the new pattern is coming out of light codes that have been in you all along, but they've not been activated through our belief systems. Because what church did you set in and grow up that taught you? You have inner light codes in you. If there's one out there, please let me know. And I'm not talking about a metaphysical group. or uh, I'm talking about traditional uh, religions as we know them. Christianity especially I'm more familiar with. Other Eastern religions may have tapped into this. Probably have. Because they're thousands of years ahead of us in, in the spirituality. While we were, went more in the West toward materialism and externalism and climbing the corporate ladder and what labels in our clothes and what car we're driving and all those things that we thought made us who we were. Well, we're finding out that taking those things away leaves us naked before the Almighty. Doesn't matter about my label today. It doesn't matter about the car I drive. I can't drive it anyway because I nowhere to go. So here we are, stripped of our human garment, standing before Creator and saying, clothe me in the light of your power. Yeah, so let's talk about Jesus here as the sample of this idea. In the book of Matthew, we see Jesus taking with him certain ones of the disciples. Now there's 12 or so that was with him, but he didn't take 12 with him. He took three. Three is the powerful number. Remember, three not only is one of the keys to the universe that Tesla talks about, but three is resurrection. Jesus in the tomb for three days and three nights. Jonah in the belly of the well, three days and three nights. you got to find how these numbers run through these metaphors and through these stories because they're telling us how that these numbers are going to be a part of the new patterning of the material world of matter. Everybody take a deep breath. Yeah. So, he took Peter, James, and John. The other nine did not fit in to be the recipe for this experience. Only those three. If you remember Peter's faith, you can't do anything beyond your senses without faith. And I'm not talking about the faith religion taught me, which is blind belief. Have faith that the Bible is the Word of God. Have faith that your church is right. Have faith that your preacher is always telling you the truth. Have faith that your doctor is always right. That's, that's a world interpretation of faith is blind belief. Just believe it. Without the research. Without the knowing. Well, I didn't fall for that. When I started the ministry at 17 years old, I said I need to know. If I'm going to give my life to this, and I had this somehow knowing that this is going to be the rest of my life, that it's not some sideline hobby that I was going to have, but I knew it was going to be my life, and I thought, I'm going to give my life to this. I need to know what I'm giving my life to. So at that moment, the seed of research was planned into me. I didn't know where to begin with that. But the seed in me that knew how to do that said, the Bible, and no one in it spoke English. If you want to know what they said, find a way to look up the Hebrew, the Greek, and finally Aramaic. For this is mostly the languages. Some Latin thrown in, and other languages. 
And I thought, man, how am I going to do that? All these words in this big book, the Bible, I got to try to go to school and learn Hebrew, and I got to go learn Greek, and I got to learn all these things. I, that didn't appeal to me. But there was a gentleman named Strong, Mr. Strong, who took the time to go through all of the New Testament, bring it into Greek, the Old Testament into Hebrew. It was all done. And all I had to do is get his big old thick book called Strong's Concordance. And that changed everything. Everything. I could find a word, look it up, and I went, wow, what I believe that said in English, it doesn't say that in the language probably they spoke. So I started ministering to people what the language that they spoke meaning rather than the English translation. And I built a ministry of over 50 years. I didn't know the word metaphysical, but I just called it the spiritual application of the word. What did it truly mean? So faith, of course, that's the first one that Jesus called for us. Peter, follow me. Next was James, wisdom. That hidden wisdom, divine wisdom, that is hidden in your heart, represented by Sophia, the feminine. And finally, John, love, the glue that holds it all together. Before you start putting bricks of truth and belief together, you better make sure there's some mortar between those bro bricks or they're going to tumble over. Bricks are held together by the mortar of love. And I'm afraid a lot of Christianity has lost the mortar of love. I've never seen so much hatred, so much judging each other, so much division and separation that is going on in this country and around the world but in America. I've never dreamed that I would see the division that we are experiencing. And a divided house cannot stand. You know, as long as liberals and Democrats and Republicans are so extremely against each other, what do you see? The crumbling of our whole government system. Which may be in a bad thing. Maybe there's a better system. I would say yes, most likely. Wow, so much here. So, Elijah in 2 Kings 2.11, as they were walking along and talking together, suddenly a chariot of fire and horses of fire appeared and separated the two of them, and Elijah went up to heaven in a whirlwind. Whoa! Don't look at that as some Bible story in Sunday school. <laughs> Don't look at that as something that is just art and beyond. This is coded. This is coded. And it's telling us that if we want to make it to a higher, different dimension of living, we've got to have a vehicle to get us there. And that's what I'm offering you. I don't know how far I'm going to get in this, but I'll keep on until we do get there. But I'm going to invite you that in you is a blueprint, a pattern for a vehicle of light that's in your body to outray your body as a, as a light space suit that's going to take you through all these dimensions. I hope you're going to enjoy this. Amen. The Coptic Gospel of Thomas, which is a much clearer version than the Bible. The Coptic Gospels, of course, were found in 1948 or so in the Nag Mahande lost books of the Bible. So they've been less tampered with than anybody and it says that in the book of Thomas, Jesus said, If they say to you, where did you come from? Tell them we came from the place where light came into being through itself alone. <sighs> so good. In other words, it didn't step down to become another version of light, but light equaled light. It was in its still pure form of what it was. If they say, who are you? Say, we are the sons and daughters the elect of the living Father. He said, if they ask, what is the sign of your Father? And I love this one. Tell them it's a movement and a rest. A movement and a rest. 
You know, I've been, uh, all of us has been on the move trying to find out truth. I've moved from this school of thought. I've moved from, uh, you know, my, my Christian to a more uh, interesting interpretation called the sons of God. Then I moved to universal reconciliation. And then I moved to more uh, metaphysics. And then I moved to more quantum ideas. And I've just moved from this thing, learned this thing, learned a new thing. And something said, rest. Stop. Stop filling your head with more just knowledge. You don't need to keep filling your intellect. Your soul is crying out to be fed. I say I'm not going to get through all this today, but let me tell you an experience. When I received what I call the awakening moment of my life in 1963, at the age of 17 years old, we called it the, the infilling of the baptism of the Holy Spirit is what we called it in those days. And it was a true experience to me. It wasn't a religious thing. It was an experience. Experience always transcends religion. Religion is not much about an experience as much as the experience is after you die and you go to heaven. But I had a heaven touch in an earth experience. And when I was... Literally, physically, literally knocked out. Yes, I was. I couldn't hold what came in, what that didn't come into me, but what was awakened in me that I didn't know I had was so powerful that my physical body could not contain it. And the way I explain that is if you put uh, a, a 220 into a 110, it's not going to work very well. So I had this 110 body and this 220 energy came in and my, all my circuits just gave away to it until I was out on a floor in this very humble tabernacle church in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And there I received three, three visions and I won't go into all of them, but the one vision that I saw was a, a heart and the heart was looking into a pit of nothingness. It was darkness. It was the absence of light. And it was so dark. And in that, you've got to remember, this is language of over 55 years ago. In that, I begin to see what's called sins of iniquity, we called them. They weren't the big sin, but they were the everyday things of jealousy, envy. Uh, we call them now the attributes of ego, the ego mind. All those things that are the lowercase human experiences. Anger, fear, all those kind of things. Malice was, came written in that heart. And the center voice says, this is, you this is you now. But something's going to change. And all of a sudden, in the middle of that darkness, came the most beautiful, luminous, white light little heart I've ever seen. I've never seen a white light like that in this dimension. It was living light. And it was white and it was alive. I could see them. I could see it like way, little waves and little uh, vortices of light. And the thing that it said to me that changed everything said, feed me. Oh, that changed my whole tra trajectory. Instead of going and talking about how bad the world was and how sinful humanity was and all those things, I decided to feed that pearl white luminous seed of a heart that was being born in me. And I realized the only thing that would feed it would be the fruits of the Spirit. Love, peace, joy. So I begin to go that path and I begin to try to feed people with God's love. And you know, the religion I was in hated me for it. The church I was pastoring said, called me in and said, you need to preach more hell to our young people. Are they going to go out in the world and do all kinds of things? We want more hell. And I tried. Oh, I remember trying to preach a message called your first night in hell. 
<laughs> and I didn't do very good with that at all. It wasn't in my spiritual nature to preach these fear-based ideas. They didn't want to hear about God's love for all mankind. They didn't want to hear that everything comes out of God through God and back into God. They didn't want to hear that there shall be the restitution and reconciliation of all things spoken in the mouth of the prophet. That did not feed them. Only fear. What we call today the pain body. It's hungry. When it wakes up, it wants fear. Don't feed your pain bodies with the fear of the times. So I just felt to tell you that because it set my ministry toward seeing the glass half full. Now, I'm not by nature a half full person, to be honest with you. My genetics, my family line can be sometimes uh, going toward more negative worry about things. But you see, I have another nature in me. I have another nature in me. That's not the true nature that I got from my mother or I got from my grandparents or whoever had all of this in them that I inherited. I had a new nature that woke up laying on that cold floor in 1963. And that nature said, if you'll feed me, feed me I will increase and your old self will decrease. And I'm so thankful for that experience. It's been the rock that I have built my ministry on. I'm going to close this morning, but I'm not done. So please tune in next, uh, well, next Sunday we're going to do the powers. But who knows, maybe Wednesday we can continue this. How about that? That'd be great. I'm going to end with the keys of Enoch. And this particular passage has a lot to do with the time 20 years ago that I was developing something called Soma Energetics, the use of frequency. In my case, I chose tuning forks. But sitting in an office thinking, oh my God, what kind of path have I gone down now? People were having a fit who had been supporting me for 30 years. Like, what is he talking about now? Vibration, sound, tuning forks. Not interested. I get nasty little emails. So Jesus is using a tuning fork now. <laughs> and I say, oh, Jesus was a tuning fork. <laughs> and I knew the kind of church they went to. They One of these churches where you raise your hands and praise God. I said, every time you raise your hand, you're a tuning fork. Bringing in the Spirit of God into your mind. Anyway. But I was sitting in my office. I was alone. And I was just thinking about it. And all of a sudden, a book fell out of a bookshelf. My left brain said, okay. We lived on a big street at that time in Indianapolis where there's a lot of trucks and traffic. And I said, the vibration probably did that. But I knew something had happened. And this book was thick and I'd had it forever. I didn't even want to tackle it. It was just too much. And I just had never done anything with this book. But it fell open. Remember, I'm looking for some kind of a resonance to the, what I was doing. And here's what it said. And I'm saying this to you today, to you, present tense, not what was written in the past, but let the Holy Spirit bring it to you today. We... Mm. we shall not suffer the negative irradiation or excessive ultraviolet radiation that will bombard the places of the earth. For we shall inhabit the safe zones at the time of the great geophysical upheavals. <sighs> Take a breath. We, you and I, the first fruits of God, the light workers, the 144,000, the 100th monkey group, whatever you want to call us, we will not suffer. That's very Buddha. Buddha says you, you can't be without the pain, but you don't have to have the suffering of the pain. I can't change what's going to go and how the world's going to unfold and do this. It may cause you some pain, but suffering is up here. 
Suffering is how you see the pain. If you see the pain from pains of the fact I'm not uh, successful, that a uh, pain of I didn't expect this, I'm not ready for it. If you go that way or if you go, oh no, the birth pains have started. Yay! I'm tired of holding this baby. It's getting uncomfortable. But I know there'll be no birth until there are birth pains. Change it. Choose again. We will not inhabit. We will inhabit the safe zones at the time of the great geophysical upheavals. Then it says the thought adjusters are now, now, not tomorrow, now. Correcting and repairing the blood crystallization of levels of ionized consciousness through frequency attunement. I said, that's it. Thank you. You told me this is going to be done through frequencies that we're going to change and create a light environment, a light body that's going to protect us through this time. And that's what I'm getting ready to present to you next Wednesday on how we're going to do that. And we're going to do it on Wednesday, actually. I'm going to show you how that we can activate the beginning of the code of your light body in that particular place. It says through this frequency attunement, this is the making of a people within a people. A mind of light within a mind of light. With this change, now get this, the physical flesh the temple of the higher garment will receive a new garment of light. A new garment of light. So when Jesus went to that high mountain, nowhere does it say ever there was a high mountain. This is one of the highest states of consciousness in which faith, wisdom, and love activated what was in Jesus. See, what was in Jesus was the Christ light. Christ is a light. And it was in Jesus. So he was Jesus the man, Christ. But when he came out of this, he wasn't Jesus the Christ. He was Christ Jesus. The inner Christ became the outer garment. So, this is so powerful when you understand that when he had this experience called the transfiguration. I'm quitting in just a couple of minutes. Give me a couple of minutes. Transfiguration. What does that mean? A complete change of form or appearance into a more beautiful state. And it said when this happened, what was in him outraged his humanity and he wore, as it was, a garment of white light. Everything he did is the way for you to do it. He would say today, do not praise me for that experience. Use that experience as your instructions of activating your own inner Christ code. Until the light that is in you becomes the light that surrounds you. And if you will become in Christed rather than Christ in you, that's all I've ever heard. Christ in me, the hope of glory. Christ in me, the hope of glory. And then, years ago, Spirit said to me, go through your Bible and mark every in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. In Him is the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In Him you are complete. And I thought, oh my God, I remember the, the message that I preached that day was that everything they told us was ours later in heaven is ours now in Christ. And I began baptizing people into Christ. I changed my church from Community Faith Tabernacle to In Christ Temple. I changed everything that I did to the In Christ message. And people came from all over the country to be baptized into Christ for heart circumcision and into the Melchizedek order of an endless life. I was in the water so much my fingers were wrinkled. Because that's what I knew. Because of a scripture that says, those that are baptized into Christ has put Christ on. And in Christ there's neither male or female, Jew or Gentile, bond or free, but we are one in Christ. We're not one with Christ in us, but we are one in Christ. 
and the middle wall of partition is broken down. Well, I got a lot more to say, so please tune in with us next Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock if you can. If not, you can get on later. Uh, and I think this is an important, but you don't want to miss the second part of this in, in how and what we can do about that uh, individually and collectively as a people to protect ourselves and how that we can move out of the frequency in which the virus is in control. You know, it's put its crown on and crowned itself the God of this third dimensional world right now and we bow down to it because we fear it so much we've never even seen it. We're still trying to figure it out, but it's brought the world to its knees. Now, that's not a good thing on one level, but on another level, it's a good thing because it stopped us. And it stopped us from destroying our earth, nature, and maybe ourselves. I can explain the fact, maybe to your satisfaction, to why people give their lives for these type of things. But everything that I know, I was watching an animal show last night, and it's always been hard for me to watch how animals, you know, attack other animals and eat them, their flesh and their life and all that. I haven't figured that one out yet. But it seems to be that's the way that creolution works in the facts of sometimes it has to do what it has to do in the bigger picture. Larger picture, I don't get it. I'm not happy about it. I'm sad about it. I have all the human feelings. But on a spiritual level, I have to have Peter faith to take me to a higher atmosphere in my mind that says all things are working together for God. And those people have lost their lives. How do you know that they're in the glory of their light right now on the other side of the veil working to help us to the next level? For we are compassed with just a cloud of witnesses. How can we be made perfect without them and they without us? Hebrews 11, 39, I believe. Are you beginning to see the code unfolding? Religions never told us this because it was hidden. But Jesus said it shall be made plainly of the Father. Oh, remember, it means chariot. The time to let your heart light shine.